This video is supported by Skillshare. The small satellite market is a relatively new market and the reason is simple. It has not been financially viable to send small satellites to space for both the launch providers and the satellite manufacturers. However, over the past decade, dedicated startups building small satellite launchers have blossomed. The first one to have achieved orbital flight right after SpaceX is Rocket Lab. So what has changed? The answer is one word, technology. The key to sending heavy equipment to space is to manage the weight of a rocket. Engineers have to build a propulsion system that's powerful enough to lift the rocket structure as heavy as a building, but at the same time, spare some weight for the payload to reach space as well. This payload might be our astronauts, it might also be communication satellites. Traditionally, governments and telcos around the world spend hundreds of millions of dollars per launch to send one of their satellites to space, but SpaceX has disrupted this market with their reusable rockets. The idea is simple, to reuse the rocket so that cost per trip is drastically reduced. Although this effectively resolved the high cost problem of the space industry, it does not provide a satisfactory answer to one of the industry's biggest trends. Satellites are getting smaller. Small satellites that weigh around 100 kilograms and tiny cube satellites that weigh only around 1 kilogram has become more and more common. This trend is once again fueled by the advancement in technology. In the mid 80s, a 36 million US dollar supercomputer was capable of executing 1.9 billion operations per second and its selling was restricted. Today, an off-the-shelf tablet computer can execute 1.6 billion operations per second and it can be purchased via internet for 300 US dollars. Unlike the 1985 supercomputer which weighed 2,500 kilograms and consumed 150 kilowatts, a tablet computer weighs around 0.5 kilograms and requires 0.01 kilowatts. This is the problem with the current space industry. Smaller satellites are powerful enough to perform tasks that used to be performed by bigger satellites, but smaller launchers are not yet fully commercialized. Imagine Neil Armstrong landing on the moon with only an iPad. That's what space travel should be like with our current level of technology. And this gets us to our discussion of today, Rocket Lab. Here we need to understand what a small satellite is and what makes Rocket Lab special. Rocket Lab is the second privately held space company that has reached space, right after SpaceX. But Rocket Lab and SpaceX focuses on two different satellite markets. SpaceX Falcon 9 launches much heavier payloads, usually between 5,000 to 10,000 kilograms, while Rocket Lab has only demonstrated capability for around 100 kilograms payload. As a result, payload that weighs 100 kilograms can either ride share on a SpaceX rocket as a secondary payload or contract Rocket Lab to build a dedicated electron rocket for its mission. If it's a tiny CubeSat that weighs only 1.33 kilograms, Rocket Lab is its only hope for getting any customization. This is Falcon 9 side by side with Electron Rocket. It's not hard to see that Falcon 9 is a bigger and more powerful rocket. From a cost per kg lifted standpoint, no launch provider in the space industry is able to match Falcon 9 Block 5 for now. The heaviest weight SpaceX has lifted so far is 9,600 kilograms. Considering SpaceX launch price of $60 million, this is 150 kilograms per million US dollars spent. For similar mass, Rocket Lab charges $5 million. So it seems that SpaceX would have won the competition in the small satellite launch market for its sheer power. But the problem is, power does not equate to performance in this market. While SpaceX can send 7,000 CubeSats in one single launch, theoretically, it's hardly the purpose of any manufacturer to send as many Cube satellites as possible. The number 7,000 also only works on paper. Record holder for sending the most satellites in one single launch is India's ISRO, which only managed to send 104 satellites in one single launch. Therefore, when it comes to small satellite market, Rocket Lab does have a first mover advantage. Satellite manufacturers usually want a specific orbit on a specific date, rapid production, dedicated launch dates, and low cost with customization. This is not something Falcon 9 can efficiently provide for small satellites. SpaceX did try to venture into this market with Falcon 1 that has payload capability of 180 kilograms, but in the end, decided on bigger rockets. Here's the launch booking system with Rocket Lab. It has an incredibly diverse and powerful system for its clients. For ride sharing with CubeSats, you get to see how much you pay to send a standard CubeSat light to low Earth orbit with Rocket Lab. It could be as low as $80,000. 
This makes space research extremely accessible to universities and research institutes around the world. This is also something SpaceX can compete with Rocket Lab simply because it would be logistics hell if SpaceX were to customize thousands of CubeSats and send them one by one to their dedicated orbits. Additionally, in terms of technology, if SpaceX were to really compete with Rocket Lab in the small satellite market, it also has to come up with an innovative payload adapter to dispatch hundreds or even thousands of small satellites per launch. This is also, in my opinion, what SpaceX will have to do if Starlink would become a reality. However, this does not mean that Rocket Lab and SpaceX will be competitors in the small satellite launch market. In fact, SpaceX's decision to build the gigantic BFR indicates that strategically, SpaceX is going bigger, not smaller. And as a result, it will be more efficient for BFR to send either a constellation of small satellites or bigger satellites. A single, dedicated small satellite launch market will be dominated by companies like Rocket Lab and Virgin Galactic simply because they provide much more customized services than SpaceX. Therefore, SpaceX and Rocket Lab are not competitors, but complementary service providers that cover the entire launch industry. The bottom line is, with powerful launches in both the super heavy lift and the small lift market, we're entering into an exciting era of space exploration and communication opening up brand new opportunities for researchers, engineers, and entrepreneurs around the world. The only relevant question to ask is, are we ready for it? The way to get ready for an exciting future is with a better self. Skillshare is an awesome online community with over 20,000 classes in analytics, business, technology, and more. You can think of Skillshare as a toolbox that helps you improve your skills when you needed it most. For me, Skillshare is about animation and business analytics that helps me grow my business on YouTube and elsewhere, but for you, it could be something different. From management to marketing, from photography to music production, Skillshare has the tools you need. For those of you guys who are interested in running your own business like me, why not check out this awesome class in Google Analytics by Jeff Sauer and start learning today. The good news for our audiences on this channel is that Skillshare has offered a two month free trial as long as you sign up with the link in the description down below. By doing so, it helps this channel as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.